We start with a single $1 bill. This dollar bill is 6 inches by 2.5 inches. A stack of 500 $1 bills is 2 inches tall. If we repeat this stack 90 times, we get $45,000, the median yearly income of the American taxpayer. This income falls within a range of forty to fifty thousand dollars, and nine percent of the American population makes around this yearly income. The next category down is thirty to forty thousand dollar range, and eleven percent of Americans fall into this category. Next down from that, the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range with thirteen percent of Americans. And next down from that, the ten to twenty thousand dollar range with thirteen percent of Americans also. And finally, at the very bottom, the 9% of Americans who earn less than $10,000 a year, which is why they look so sad. Moving back up to the median range, the next category up from here is the fifty dollars to $60,000 range, with 8% of Americans earning this income. Then the sixty dollars to $70,000 range with 7% of the population. The seventy dollars to $80,000 range with 6% of Americans. The eighty dollars to $90,000 range with 5% of Americans and the ninety to one hundred thousand dollar range with four percent of Americans. Above a hundred thousand the earners get fewer and fewer so the categories get larger. So we have the one hundred thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollar income range with ten percent of the American population. Then the one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollar range with three percent of the population. And second from the top the two hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollar range. These are people who make an average of $275,000 a year, and they make up 1% of the population. Then, finally, the top 1% of the population. This one guy makes more than the bulk of the lower end of the spectrum combined, and makes far more than the next earner down the line. He earns an average of $1.1 million a year, making his stack of money an impressive 367 feet high. That's about a quarter the height of the Empire State Building. Now let's multiply our population by 10, making a sample of 1,000 taxpayers. One of these 1,000 taxpayers represents one-tenth of 1% 1 of the American population. That would be this guy right here. He makes, on average, $5.6 million. That's a stack of $1 bills measuring 1,866 feet high. His stack of $1 bills is substantially taller than the Empire State Building. Once again, let's multiply the population by 10. The population now becomes 10,000 representative taxpayers. One of these 10,000 represents 1 100th of 1%. That's this guy right here. He earns an average of $25.7 million a year. His stack of $1 bills is a towering 8,566 feet. That's higher than the altitude at which cumulus clouds form. Now let's go back down to Earth and look at who benefits most from the tax plans being offered by Obama and McCain. Barack Obama's plan would give tax breaks to the vast majority in this country who are making the least amount of money, including those of us making the median, and even those of us in the upper middle class. John McCain's plan, on the other hand, mainly favors the very few who are making vast sums of money. Maybe he believes those towers of money will trickle down to the rest of us, even though it seems like that strategy has only served to widen the gulf between rich and poor. Or maybe he's just watching out for his wife Cindy, who has a fortune worth $100 million. That's a pile of $1 bills 33,333 feet high. 